Hey there, Angel. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, tutorial on using TAL Noisemaker. And um, the reason I'm talking so quietly is I'm trying not to wake my roommate up. So hopefully you can hear me OK. Anyway, I've got a blank mixed craft project here. I'm going to go into the instrument selection thing, the STI instruments. And we have here the instrument TAL Noisemaker. This is the synth that I showed you how to use um, in our lesson way back when, but I realized that was a long time ago, so I'm going to go over this again. Um, hopefully, we'll give you enough to um, go off of. I'm going to click Edit, and it brings up the screen for it. Um, so, um, just a quick little tour. Um, here we have two OSCs. <laughs> this is short for oscillator. And these are what generates the sound. You can see them set to saw waves by default. Um, over here in master we have the volume levels of the different oscillators, oscillator 1 and 2, also a third oscillator sub, which adds a really low tone underneath everything else. You can see by default oscillator 2 is turned completely down, oscillator 1 is up, and sub is up. If I hit a key, you can hear both of those together. I'm going to turn the sub down, and you can hear just the lone saw wave of oscillator one. Okay. Um, now I can change these waveforms. Oscillator one allows me to change between these three, saw, pulse, and noise. And oscillator two allows um, a few extras, um, triangle and sine. So to create the sound you're looking for, you're gonna to wanna to use oscillator two. Um, so you'll notice both of these are set to saw by default. What happens if I turn up oscillator 2? You can hear, um, I'm going to turn oscillator 1 down. Oscillator 2 is um, currently an octave above. You can change the tuning of the oscillators here. Um, and that's just per note. Um, you can change the fine tuning. If they're at the same note to create a cool effect. You've probably heard that effect used before. Um, now, Let's see. Let's change this to sine. And that's the sound you're looking for for your instrument. I'm going to keep it on soft for now for the demo. Um, now, currently, I can only play one note at a time. Um, but I can change that right here under voices. I can have it play as many as up to six at a time. Now I can do chords. One cool thing though uh, with mono mode is I can turn on portamento. And then I turn this up and you can hear it sliding between notes, which is pretty sweet. This determines how long the slide is, which can, <laughs> can be pretty long. Um, turn that off. I'm going to go with six voices, because I like polyphony. Um, anyway, then we have master volume. Um, and we'll skip ring mod, sync, and I guess this is just like a master tuning, but we'll skip ring mod and sync for now, um, as well as this other stuff. That should be a good starting point. Um, now I'm going to come, I'm going to go over the LFO a little bit later. I'm going to click on Synth 2. You'll see when I click on one of these, um, the panel, a different panel opens up. In fact, click, I can click on Synth 1 and close all of them. So there's um, Synth 1, Synth 2, Envelope, Editor, and Control. Um, synth 1 has the sound generator settings. Synth 2 has uh, a second LFO, so you get two of those. And then two um, what are known as envelopes. Um, this is an ADSR. And this is a filter envelope. 
Technically, both of these are ADSR envelopes. Um, the one on the right here affects the volume of the sound, and the one on the left affects the filter. So for kind of getting the sound to have the right shape, um, you would use this one on the right. So A stands for attack, and if you drag this up, that you'll notice the, when you press the key, the note fades in instead of starting right away. Okay. Decay um, is the amount of time it takes for the note to fade from full volume to the sustain level. So let me explain that a little better. You can actually see a little diagram here. Attack is the amount of time it takes for the sound to get from zero volume all the way to full volume. Then once it's at full volume, it will decay to the sustain point. Now right now the sustain point is at full volume, so going from full volume to full volume, uh, you're not going to hear any difference, regardless of what you set decay to. But if I pull this down, let's take about here, you'll hear, I'm going to turn the attack up, you'll hear it go up to 100%, and then because decay is set to zero, it'll drop immediately to the sustain level. You hear that? Let me turn it up a little. Here, just drop. That's because the decay is set to zero, so let's turn that up a bit. You can hear it go up and then go down, and then, it's, and then, then it um, levels out at the sustain level. So I can have it level out lower, or just not sustain at all. Which is how you might do like more of a percussive sound, like if I take the attack down. <laughs> All right, so you can get the idea of how some of those sounds are made. Um, then release is um, what happens after you let go of the keys. So you turn that up and you hear it fade out after I let go of the keys. Um, so if you wanted to do like a really smooth sound, you could have attack up and release up. I turn saw one back on and uh, fine tune it a little bit. A kind of a cool synth strings like effect that way. Um, so that's how the ADSR works. Um, we'll leave this top portion out of it for now um, and we'll talk about the filter in a little bit but I want to get to the LFOs. The LFO is how you can, um, well first of all I'll explain what LFO means. It means low frequency oscillator. Um, so anything you can imagine oscillating, um, you can do with the LFO. So you can oscillate the pitch of a note, make it go up and down, and that's how you get vibrato. Or you can oscillate the volume, and that's how you get tremolo. And you can oscillate other things too, but those are the main ones I'll show you how to do now. So in order to oscillate the pitch of, um, we'll do oscillator 2 here. I'm going to click this destination um, thing here and set it to oscillator 2. You could also oscillate both of them if you wanted. Um, now by default you won't hear anything and that's because both the rate and the amount are set to zero. You'll notice some knobs zero is at the leftmost position. You'll notice some it's in the middle because um, it'll go up to positive numbers here or negative numbers down here. See the plus one minus one? So I'm going to increase this a little bit and then I bring up the rate. And you can hear a little bit of volume or uh, pitch modulation. Let's bring up the amount more. Okay, that's a little too much. Let's bring the, let's make it a faster vibrato.
so you get the idea how that works. Um, you can also do, I mean, you can make it crazy if you wanted to. Siren or something, or you can set it to, um, uh, oh, okay. I guess I can't set it to the volume unless there's another way. Oh, this one can, LFL, LFO2 can go to volume. LFO1 can't, so sometimes they can do different things. So if I do volume, set the rate, set the amount. Okay, you can do stuff like that, or pan. Here, it's switching between um, speakers a little bit. So those are some of the cool things that you can do. I'm gonna set this back to off. I'm gonna uh, show you how to use the filter. The filter um, allows you to shape the tone. Um, by default, um, you, it's set to what's called a low-pass filter. This is what LP stands for. And there's different low-pass filters. And that lets, um, as the filter cutoff goes down, that lets um, only the low parts of the sound come through and cuts out the high parts. So if you start with a really bright waveform like saw, um, and then you reduce the cutoff, you'll hear it. You'll hear the sound become less bright. Which is kind of cool. Um, there's also a resonance feature, which um, emphasizes the uh, sound at the cutoff point. It basically makes it more piercing, and you can kind of go crazy with that. It's like almost painful. <laughs> so, um, but what's cool with the cutoff is you can actually um, give it its own ADSR envelope. So, I can actually have it. Um, let's try this. Um, now, by default, I'm not going to hear anything. And even if I turn this down, you won't hear any difference. Um, but this knob here controls how much the um, envelope affects the filter. So I have to turn this pot to a positive number to have it affect it the way that I would expect. So you hear the attack, you hear the filter open and then close. I'll slow down the close a bit. Slow down a bit more. And you can hear the release when the filter's too close. So I'm gonna bring that up. I think that's really nice. If we bring in that other waveform again. created a pretty cool sound. Now I'm going to bring this oscillator back to pan. So it kind of adds a whole nother, another layer of coolness to the sound. I'm going to skip over this envelope editor for now. Um, I can add that. I can tell you how to use that once you've got the basics down. The last thing I'll go over is under control. Um, and here you can control a few things, like you can add reverb. Um, which is cool, or delay. And of course that you'll want to set up, probably, um, learn how to use the parameters. Feedback's too high. <laughs> and this makes the um, the delay a little bit stereo. So there I've made quite a nice um, sound. You 
can also control how the velocity, how hard you hit the key, affects the sound. You can have it really affect the volume. Or you can have it affect how much the filter um, affects things. Actually, ah, I don't think I did that right, but you get the idea. Anyway, okay, so that's kind of the basics. Hopefully that'll get you started. Um, you can make an awful lot of sounds just knowing that without even getting into the other stuff. So hopefully this was helpful. I hope you have a great night.